worship, print it in your worship bulletin. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, my people, because Emmanuel, God, is with us and is in our midst today and always. We are called to reverence. We are called to speak the name of Jesus because there is a mighty power in that name.
because we trust in the shelter of your wings. You have given us the heritage of those who fear your name. We seek your care and guidance this year and throughout our lives. We believe in your loving kindness and long to spend eternity with you. As we find our time here on earth, may we continue to sing your praises and stand in awe of your holy name. And now for a call to praise, lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. O Lord, open thou all lips. Jesus would be 
a Nazarene. Nothing about the birth of Jesus was accidental. Nothing was unplanned. Nothing about your birth, we are sitting here today, was an accident. Nothing was unplanned. We are all here who were born for a reason. You are not an accident. <coughs> Everything was already prophesied centuries ago that Jesus was coming. And long before Jesus was born, the prophets had already received an insight. 700 years, some of the prophets 500 years earlier, some of the prophets a thousand years. David was one of the prophets of Israel. King David was about a thousand years before the birth of Jesus. And in the psalm, he talks about Jesus. They all knew that a redeemer would come. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but he grew up, he grew up in Nazareth. Nazareth comes from the Hebrew word Netzer, N-E-T-Z-E-R, which means that there is a branch or a shoot, S-H-O-O-T. In Isaiah chapter 11, the prophet Isaiah talked about a branch that would come from the stem of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. When a tree is, is chopped down, sometime later, a shoot will grow from the stump, and in due time, a new tree will spring up where the old one had died. From Nazarene, the word Nazarene, or Nazarene, we get the word Nazarite. And to be a Nazarite, what does that mean? It means that you would have to come from the town of Nazareth. Nazarite is also a Hebrew word. It means to be consecrated. Nazarites started way back in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 1 and 21. It's not anything new. They usually will take a vow and they were obligated to pertain to the Nazarite strictures and doctrines. They had to stick to this for 30 days. And during those 30 days, they had to take a vow. They were to abstain from cutting their hair. Jesus had long hair. They have no contact with the dead bodies or gravesite, including those of family members. Nazarites were supposed to abstain from all wines and liquor and anything else made from grapes, and they were to remain holy unto the Lord. They took a vow, and within those 30 days, this is what they had to keep up with. Always remember that God chose an insignificant place like Nazareth where Jesus would grow up. The people there were looking for a great authoritarian political leader to come, and also God wanted to show them that his kingdom has spiritual reign over all things. Nazareth, as the boyhood home of Jesus, it is where he preached his first sermon. And his first sermon led to his rejection by his fellow people. Jesus said, a prophet has no honor in his own land. And in those days, Nazareth was a Jewish village. Surrounded by hills, it was not very accessible. Nazareth was urban. Nazareth was the ghetto. There was high crime, prostitution, lots of thugs, robberies, and everything bad. There were no picket fences in Nazareth. Nathaniel said, can anything good come from Nazareth? But Jesus of Nazareth proved 
that good things can come from bad places. Good things can come from the swamps. Good things can come from the ghetto. And this was a teaching lesson directed to all humanity that God is everywhere, no matter where you come from. God has people everywhere. God loves everyone everywhere. In the region of fluent communities, God is also there. In the middle class neighborhoods, God is there. In the extravagant neighborhoods in the Hollywood Hills, where there is much braggadocio and sprawling mansions, God is also there. And in the rat infested slums, even in our present day America, God is also there. He is willing to save everyone that calls on his sweet and holy name. And as you can imagine, growing up Nazareth was not easy for Jesus. He had to begin his ministry in a place where thugs and everything bad and poverty and crime were the passwords of the town. Yet, God saw it fit and a good place to begin a ministry. And always remember that we look on the outside and we frown. But God, who is rich in mercy, and who, love, who loves all people, his love endures, God looks on the inside, and he does not frown on anyone. Jesus grew up in Nazareth, an uncelebrated and forgotten town of little importance. And I told you earlier that Nathaniel said, nothing good or can anything good come from Nazareth. Jesus saw it and redeemed it. Nazareth was a fallen race, but God saw it fit to redeem it. And at the resurrection, Jesus arose from the dead, and the angel said to the women, You see Jesus of Nazareth. He is not here. He is risen. It was crime infested. But Jesus was never embarrassed of growing up in Nazareth. Many times in the Bible, he referred to himself as Jesus of Nazareth. We can never be embarrassed of where we were born and where we came from. It is our birthplace, no matter what it is, good things can come from an ugly place, right? So now the tables had turned for Nazareth and sweet glory approached them. Jesus was in their midst. Jesus introduced himself to the apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. Jesus said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, and why are you persecuting me? And today I ask you, how did you grow up? I know many of you did not grow up in Nazareth. But do you believe that the Spirit of God still exists in urban towns and cities? And if your answer is yes, if your answer is no, will you say a prayer for those towns and cities? And are you happy in the town where you live, where you were born? Are you happy in the town that you grew up in? I grew up in a small village, about 500 people, somewhere on an island in a village. There were mountains around me and an ocean. Everybody knew what you had for dinner. Everybody knew you bought a new pair of shoes. Everybody knew you had a fight with your spouse last night. In those days, there were no telephones, but word of mouth got out. There was the church, and there was the school. We worshipped. We sang, God save our gracious queen. That was our national anthem. It was of British rule. 
until 1978 when the island became independent. So we wrote our own national anthem. And so it was a little house on the hill. And if you go down the hill, there was a river. There were bamboo trees that made noises, scary noises, in the sunshine on a bright and sunny day when we would go down to the river. Everything grew down by the river. Fruits that I have never seen elsewhere, only down there. And as a child, we learned to climb in our skirts and dresses. Are there any climbers here? Oh yes, don't let the high hills fool you. I can still climb. Maybe not as fast as I used to. And the boys would chase us and we had to learn how to climb. We knew how to fish in the river. I know a mullet when I see it. And I know all the groupie fishes when I see them. Because that's what we would catch in the river. There were many mango trees and guava trees and passion fruit trees. Trees and plants and fruits. I have never seen a babadeen. You don't even know what that is. It is a huge and mighty fruit as big as a watermelon. But for some reason it grows like an oval fruit. I have never seen it anywhere. And when you cut it, you can put a cup to it and you can get like a whole glass of water. I have never seen that anywhere. This is where I grew up. I don't know what it was like for you growing up. It may not have been like Nazareth, but I want to tell you where I grew up. We did not know anything about crime. We don't know anything about drugs. We don't know anything about the bad stuff. It was utopia. I grew up in utopia. I never even knew you could talk back to your parents until I came here and I said, oh, <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> Mom said to do one thing and it was done. Dad said to go get some water or get to the grocery store, it was done. I did not know we could talk back. And I want to go back to being five years old because I have some things I really wanted to do. <laughs> okay? That's how innocent we were. It was a time when we went to school and the school bell rang. We don't have school bells anymore. We had to pray before we went home to lunch. We did not have a cafeteria. I'm from the Bulldogs. We had to pray before we went to get our lunch. And when we came back from lunch, we had the school bell would ring and we had to pray and thank God for the food we just had. Today at school, there are no prayers. You want to lose your job? Talk about prayers in school. We will not get into that. But we knew God. And in assembly every morning, we had to read a Bible text. So me standing here before you started a long, this ministry started a long time ago. I had no idea it would end up one day that I would be standing here before a congregation. If anyone had told me, I would have said, you have lost your mind, and here I am. Today in Nazareth, it is a large Arab city. The majority of the people there, they are Muslims and Christians. It has a population today of 77,445 people. There are many high-tech companies, mostly in the field of software development. Many refer to Nazareth today as the Silicon Valley of the Arab community. It is a center of Christian pilgrimage with many shrines commemorating biblical events. I pray one day our church could go there. There are many churches, including the Church of Annunciation, which is the largest Catholic church in the Middle East, with the belief that it marks the site where
where the angel Gabriel announced the future birth of Jesus to Mary. And in closing, let me reassure you that our cognitive consonants <clears throat> puts us in a sound state of mind. We all are conscious of the fact that Jesus exists and Jesus is alive. Therefore, our thoughts and actions should be synonymous with what we say and how we worship Jesus. In order to come to God, we must first believe that he exists. Our cognitive consistency should always align with the words of our Savior because we are all called to fellowship and to reverence the one who created us and gave us all the dimensions to function in this world. We are not of ourselves. God created us. We don't have the mechanics to save ourselves. That's why he came into the world and died to save us. We must always yield to that higher power found in the person of the Most High God let us always believe in the saving strength and power of his resurrection, because if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we will be saved. It's that easy, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 4. I have preached that here many times. If you decide that heaven will be your final abode, you can yield to 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 1 to 3. If we believe, if, it never said we believe, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, there is power in that resurrection. We have to believe that and come to Jesus and ask him to save us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our second hymn, it's a very familiar one. It comes from the Red Hymnal, hymn number 335, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
try our hearts on the wisdom. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and may we bless the works of our hands. The morning offering will now be given and received, and the choir will sing for us, I got peace like a river.
This is the moment in worship where you can share your joys and your concerns. Does anyone have a joy or something they would like to share with us? A prayer? Yes. My mom, Ann, who fell last week. Praise for Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Chair, yes. uh, our family attended the uh, choir concert in Bridgewater. Uh, uh, Seven different high schools participated in that. Uh, what a fantastic event! Uh, tremendous spirit on the part of the uh, students, and uh, it was really like a love fest. It was great. Yes, great school music. to you on this third Sunday of the month. In the new year, the year is still relatively young. And we know not what awaits us today, tomorrow, next week, and next month. Our lives would change in the twinkling of an eye, not always for the worse, but for the best. You are our hope in this world, and we pray that all will change for the best. We pray for our families and friends, those who are going through difficult times in their lives. Father, remember those who are jobless, those who still don't believe in your word, that you could come to them and tap them into their hearts that they too can turn around and serve you. We remember the poor ones, Father, those who woke up this morning, today, tomorrow, and there's nothing to eat. We always lift in prayer our elderly, those in nursing homes, those in hospitals, those who are at home. There are many who have no feet, no hands, no eyes, cannot speak. There are many who, are, who still cannot hear. And we thank you, Father, for them, because they are your children too. We always pray for those who are in prison, those whose society has condemned as the rejects. But we know that Jesus Grew up in Nazareth. It was a town full of crime and where thugs thrived. And yet he grew up there among them. He cast no one out. And today we pray that we can embrace each and every one, those who come from different towns and cities, Father, that we can embrace the rich and we can also embrace the poor. 
In prayer today, we lift up Alex, who had a birthday, Harriet's family. We pray for Martha. We pray for music. We pray for Anne and Dick and Jane. For Bob, Todd, Joe Ellen, the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia, the people of South Korea. We pray for every living person on the face of this earth. We pray for the country, Father, the United States of America, where so much is happening with the wild inflation and prices at the grocery store. Father, we pray for good government. We pray for joy. We pray for happiness. We pray for contentment. We pray for our friends, and we pray for those who have difficulty in understanding and receiving any word from you. Father, open our hearts to receive you. Open our minds and open our eyes that we can see. Open our ears that we can hear. And when all else have failed, let us always yield to the prayer that you taught your disciples on the mount that day. When we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
I bless you all in the name of Jesus. Until we meet again, let us now join in the benediction printed in our worship bulletin together.